originally from the divided Germany and I lived in Belfast in Northern Ireland for um, 10 years or so. So I was uh, very interested, intrigued to see an exhibition on hidden histories um, being curated at the Eye. And um, it came just a little bit too late for me because I was teaching students uh, in a module on curating memory today, underrepresented histories and contemporary art exhibitions. And um, when I started teaching that module in 2014 here in Amsterdam, there was hardly anything. I really had to look uh, which kinds of case studies we would visit and uh, where uh, students could find their examples. And first of all, I make students bring an object or an image to represent the hidden history that they um, are most familiar with or that they think needs to be represented in a museum. So it's almost as if this exhibition was one of these exhibitions that the students themselves suggested. And of course it's not. And uh, now uh, there are also many, many exhibitions doing a rather similar thing. Um, in a way, since the Goede Hope exhibition at the Rijksmuseum about a year ago, or two is it now, and um, uh, currently the things that I did visit with my students was things that matter at the Tropenmuseum and also um, Black togetherness as a lingua franca in frame or framed, just uh, beside here. And um, of course, there are many hidden histories, uh, tales of hidden histories that are now exhibited in Amsterdam. I could also think of the Green Box Museum near Leidse Plein, uh, show showing Saudi Arabian contemporary art. But of course, these are not all war histories, and this exhibition focuses on war histories in particular. And in that regard, I think that um, war is so topical that it features, you know, f top and front in our news uh, media all the time. Uh, from Belfast, I know that war histories are uh, very much not <laughs> underrepresented in terms of uh, black tourism. People find spaces of war very intriguing somehow and also want to hear individual stories, really want to come close to some histories of war. And that is actually what uh, this exhibition does in relation to some conflicts uh, in the world. And uh, when I think of um, the exhibition or the uh, works that are selected here for this exhibition, I um, zone in a little bit on Omar Fast's Continuity, which is a work that I had uh, known already. I think I saw it first in this big um, art biennial documenta, uh, 13, in uh, Kassel. And um, it does deal with um, a soldier returning from Afghanistan. So all the, the news stories that we remember about the war on um, terror um, and the, the loss of a family, so of a couple's son that is in such an intriguing way staged and restaged, um, whether loss of relationship or of uh, personality changes of character or actual loss of a child. Um, we're not quite sure when we watch that film um, developing. So um, the Individual case studies focus in this exhibition on tales of hidden stories. And um, from the fact that I studied uh, literature as well, English literature, I know, uh, and history, I know that um, in writing history, as human beings, we can't but make stories out of what we've experienced, what we've heard, what we've researched in archives, the evidence that we find. And it's also really interesting that there's this big table in the middle of the exhibition with evidence. So there's uh, quite a lot of attention to that. So we make stories with these kinds of things. And Hayden White has um, uh, many decades ago already said that um, these stories have a certain pattern um, there are the, the conquest, the um, uh, trials and tribulations, or somebody returning home or love stories and things like that. So a number of um, uh, storylines or patterns, um, plots that we 
think of. And of course, this concerns both people's private histories that they tell and retell and that, that get a little bit sort of um, sedimented or fixed in the retelling. But it also concerns official histories. So the things that end up in the history books or that we think of as um, the standard narrative on, I don't know what, the Second World War. And uh, I think the exhibition... Um, Put, uh, draws our attention to the similarities between personal histories and, um, and official histories or the differences between those and how all of that is made. And this is very important, actually. Um, I think the exhibition does something that, that sort of personalizes people's experience at a time when... Um, in the political field, people are trying to establish certain master narratives and uh, personal complex stories tend to get forgotten. Or complexity um, is, is wiped out and uh, sort of removed from very clean um, lines of argument that people present in, let's say, right-wing populism. So inserting complexity actually, I think, has a social role. And the museum is playing this role for a public that is willing to open itself up to different kinds of stories. Of course, it's also a problem then who who do you believe or is it all just opinion? And um, there are yeah, different aspects of this um, field that we become a little bit uncomfortable with. And um, I have nothing against the the poetic side of things. Yeah, If you tell one person's story, it's one person's story. But if an artist picks up on a sort of a generic kind of a... Um, history that is maybe made up of the personal stories of different people, then it, it becomes a little bit more um, representative or uh, gains a, um, a charge that maybe um, has something to do with all, also uh, poetics and in terms of literature. I mentioned the Second World War, and I'm thinking of W.G. Sebald's literature, for example, where he uses uh, pictures that he made worse by photocopying and photocopying again. And um, he's not using these pictures to illustrate the stories of emigrants from um, Germany, Jewish emigrants in the UK after um, the Second World War. Um, so the histories of the survivors. Um, so illustrating is not necessarily what artists or even writers do. Um, they gather maybe sometimes evidence. They might themselves put themselves into a place where they're researchers, where they um, are witnessing certain things themselves. But they do a, a, a great range of different things. They, keep, they can keep a story in the media, that is otherwise so easily forgotten, they can also reimagine um, a different kind of story, a different kind of um, even human right. Um, so if um, an artist uh, takes a, a documentary photograph or makes a documentary film, then the people who, may, uh, who are um, the subjects of that work may not actually in real life have their, their human right honored, but they have somebody to appeal to, and that's the audience. So we um, get the sense that uh, as visitors to this exhibition, we are appealed to in many different ways. We become a part of who can carry on the story. And that became particularly clear in the work um, that mediated that the pre uh, priest's story in the um, Chinese um, cultural uh, war, the uh, two children and how the children then might remember and how uh, a film team a crew uh, is also part of witnessing uh, that man's story. 
I like the um, idea of Bloomberg and Shana Rin's um, six-meter film role that got exposed, but not actually in order to take images of a conflict zone, but as material, as film to be taken to a site and travel and that a journey to be documented and then to come back showing basically nothing or an abstract work of art. So that um, a poetic approach... Um, does justice to the fact that we can't actually really represent war. We can't ever really know what a person's experience of any situation is, whether it's it's war or not. Um, so experiences are very specific, and the more we maybe hear of other people's experiences, we can uh, have empathy for them, and uh, we participate in... Um, a kind of a um, experience of a group that has um, had some knowledge shared with it. But if we also see something like an abstract film role, um, just colors and so on, that functions as a reminder of something that is then our own story to be uh, created in our heads. What um, I've been missing a little, if I may say so, in the exhibition is that with all of these ranges of approaches telling the poetic um, non-representation, um, there is something that um, artists can also do, and that is really um, intervene. I think the museum intervenes in a certain story anyway. This exhibition does something in relation to um, underrepresented uh, histories or the um, hidden histories of war. But artists can also um, do something that is maybe sometimes related to documentary as well. So in uh, relation to Northern Ireland, there's a film called Elephant that shows senseless violence. One scene cut um, beside another and another and another, just sort of piling up this violence without context. Uh, where people um, get shot or bombed or or whatever, and through this this totally senseless accumulation of these scenes of violence, we um, are led as viewers of this film to um, yeah analyze the violence in the Northern Irish conflict as completely senseless. So that does have a an effect as well. And um, when I think of um, um, Steve, Steve McQueen's hunger also in um, representing the same context. That's much more of a, an actual, um, well, a real movie made of uh, the hunger strikes in uh, Northern Ireland um, to, to bring to our senses, really. It's a very visceral film. Uh, the experience that uh, some people um, have had in that context. But um, even pushing it another step further, I think uh, this exhibition could also do with a reference to, for example, um, or showing of the work of forensic architecture. So artists um, who research evidence and present counter evidence to master narratives in uh, a filmic medium, but also in a way that uh, the uh, material becomes usable in the uh, court of law and in other different situations where it really does have a, a direct impact on um, people getting their rights, um, on, um, on uh, veracity of a certain claim uh, to be uh, established. And um, Ayal Weizmann, who um, is conducting with many um, of his partners this large project called Forensic Architecture, he is based in a university. And he is showing these, um, these counter-evidence um, works, one should say, um, in courtrooms first and then maybe in museums. In back in Utrecht, um, there was an exhibition of um, theirs to be seen recently. And um, what I think it does in a museum is it, um, it shows that artists also have skills um, to 
um, to be researchers, to assemble um, evidence, to interpret that evidence, to do visual um, analysis, in a way, of material that many other people couldn't do. Um, to see in the round, to take a, a, um, a position that is above disciplines or trans interdisciplinary in order to really get all the different threads of stories together, of hidden stories, and um, um, establish truth in the world about these stories. So um, I think the, the current exhibition at the Eye does a lot, and it goes... Um, a long way in order for us to problematize um, the the claim sometimes maybe that individual stories are just um, different opinions, but it could have gone a little further in um, in that direction, also to say that uh, hidden stories are sometimes proven within both, of course, the court of law and the museum, because the museum has this very interesting and also multidisciplinary, um, supradisciplinary role in society where um, it doesn't actually need to do anything. Um, but, of course, it already does a lot by drawing funding, for example, from governments and other places. So it establishes a truth in the world. It's real. But actually, it's devoted to um, stories, things that are not real. And it has this, um, this position then, therefore, to negotiate between what is real and what is not. And as we are living in a, an era of right-wing populism and so on, we are finding in um, Ayal Weizmann, Forensic Architecture's words, that um, the institutions that... Um, can uh, make a, a claim for veracity um, are actually um, under attack. So the museum and the university together, where research happens and this this um, debate on um, truth or not truth happens, that um, that these particular institutions are under fire. And I think and I hope that the visitors to this particular exhibition will see their own role in uh, not just viewing beautiful images, but actually in um, showing also their support for an institution that has all, the, all of these capabilities.